I've just realised what shirt he's wearing and where it's pointing. Thanks. Don't lay on my bookcase. Hi everyone! So, I'm back with this idiot. Hello! <laughs> and I'm also back like 30 seconds after filming my last video because I actually got a lot more books in June than the ones I bought. The reason he is here is be the reason he is here is because he gave me most of them. So Cameron gave me six books. They're not even that heavy. So basically, we're just gonna I'm gonna show you them, and he's gonna quickly say what they're about. Hey, I can be quick, I'm quicker than you anyway. Yeah, but I just mean like snappy. <laughs> You're the one that's wanting to like lie down. <laughs> I can do snappy. Good. Okay. <laughs> the first book is. Skin and Other Stories by Roald Dahl, which I believe is a collection of short stories. Yeah. Basically, so it's basically just Roald Dahl's collection of short stories. It's a collection of slightly more adult short stories are based on sort of themes like uh, kind of murder, people disappearing, suspense, theft, all that kind of stuff. Just generally um, really good and the story of the title is based on is about a man with a tattoo worth millions of pounds on his back. The second book is Artemis Fell by Owen Colfer. So yeah, it's the first one in the Artemis Fowl series, which is a 9 to 12 kids book, but he loved it as a kid, so he was like, you have to read that. Yeah, she does. She has to read it. It's incredible. Kind uh, of sci-fi fantasy, isn't it? Uh, kind of, yeah. Um, it's about Artemis Fowl, who's a, he's a 12, he's 12 uh, when the book starts, but he's a criminal genius. Uh, and he basically runs his father's criminal empire um, in place of his dad, who's gone mysteriously missing. And also by Owen Colfer, he gave me The Supernaturalist, which I think we might have touched up on, touched up on a little <laughs> bit in our little Silk Seven book mm, mini haul. Might have done. Um, again, one of the books he liked as a kid, uh, and it's it, oh my god, that's weird. One of the characters in this is called Cl Clarissa Frain. Anyone who reads Mortal Instruments, Clarissa Frain. <laughs> Cl oh no, Clarissa Frain's not a character; it's an orphanage. A boy called Cosmo Hill. Um, like he, it's set. A, like sort of in the near future in a city called Satellite City everything's controlled by a massive satellite in low orbit um, Cosmo's sent to an orphanage uh, at birth um, where they, they test all kinds of chemicals and products on the orphans and basically use them as guinea pigs for human experimentation and one day he decides like screw this I've had enough and he escapes with his best friend but he's nearly killed in the escape attempt and he realises that he can see demons which begin sucking the life out of him until a group of uh, people burst in, save him, and say, we're the supernaturalists, we can see these demons too. And uh, Cosmo joins them, and they that go off that, on a grand adventure. That sounds like the Mortal Instruments, just the fact that, like, Clary can see these people who are, like, in this thing, and her friend can't, and it turns out she's a shadow hunter person, but, like, she hasn't been trained as one. The shadow hunters are like, hey, you're a shadow hunter now, and then they, like, yeah. Yeah, he ends up seeing them because of the near-death experience in this, I think. The next book is... Massive. <laughs> <laughs> It's Metro 2033 by a Russian guy whose first name I can say, which is Dmitry, and I can't be asked saying Glukovsky. Dmitry Glukovsky. Glukovsky. And my brain can't go Glukovsky. Ah, Glukovsky. Glukovsky. There yeah, we go. Glukovsky. There we go. Basically, it's set, it's set in Russia. It's uh, yeah. set somewhere in the year 2033, and it's like post-apocalyptic kind of sort of thing. The year 2013, oh, the man. world gets destroyed um, in a nuclear apocalypse and thousands upon thousands of people flee into the Moscow metro system because uh, it was built to double up as a bomb shelter, basically. Uh, so they all survived the apocalypse and 20 years later the main character, Artyom, uh, has to go on a great journey to the centre of the metro, basically, to try and warn everybody about um, some terrible danger that's coming. Uh, I'm not going to give too much away, but yeah, uh, one of the best sci-fi novels I've read in years. So yeah, uh, absolutely fantastic though, uh, so I recommend you give it a read. Um, I don't yeah. like sci-fi, so it'll be interesting. I want her to like sci-fi, it's incredible. <laughs> and actually, the other book he gave me, I actually bought for him as well, um, and that's the sequel, which is Metro 2034, which I'm guessing it just kind of follows on from that, but the next year. Yeah, it's set the year after, but it follows two different characters. It follows... Um, Colonel Hunter, who was in the first book as a minor character, uh, he's the main character in this, and uh, Homer, who's an old man who styles himself as um, the same Homer who wrote the Odyssey, and he sets out to write a, a great epic poem about the history of the Metro to leave behind as his legacy, so it's about 
um, him and Hunter uh, journeying through the metro. Um, uh, Homer's trying to find a sort of inspiration to complete his, his greatest work, and Hunter's on some kind of mission that he won't completely tell Homer about. So it's uh, it's all about that. It's again really good if you like Metro Twenty Thirty Three. You should check it out. It's post-apocalyptic sci-fi. But you're not going to read this without reading the first one, to be perfectly honest. Probably not. Well, you could actually. You could read it as a standalone if you wanted. Different characters. And the last one he gave me is Be My Enemy by Christopher Brookmeyer. Absolutely hilarious. Um, so it's uh, a character who's been in a few of Brookmeyer's other books. Uh, Jack Parlebane, who's a investigative journalist. And he ends up going on this... Uh, this uh, sort of outward bound adventure course, uh, normally done for like corporate execs and stuff, uh, way out in the Scottish Highlands, um, and he goes there to write a story on it for whatever reason. I, I can't quite remember why he goes, but uh, he soon finds out that uh, the uh, he, they stray onto some army land and the army start firing back with live ammunition, and it turns out that everything's kind of gone a bit wonky and there's things going on that nobody really understands. Uh, and people are trying to kill everybody on the course. So it's wonderful. And uh, one of the truest things from the back of the uh, book is ferociously unpredictable, bitingly funny, action-packed to perfection, Brookmeyer on top form. And you'll never look at a snooker table the same way, because you won't. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I'm going to read just to find out what the snooker table is. The next four books are my own ones, but they were all sent to me from publishers. The first one you've already seen, and that was Ways of the Dude by Maura McPartland. You've seen me un like, unpackage this, I wouldn't really call it unbox, it was in a paper, it was in an envelope. And you also see my, well, I'm surprised that you see my review of this. It's set in 2089, and uh, sort of, it's, the world's kind of, it's quite dystopian, it kind of reminds me of The Giver, it's like a world that's kind of controlled like a bit differently to like how it is. My brain's... Kind of Orwellian, like the government control everything? Kind of, yeah. And basically the world is split into sort of privileged and the natives. The privileged being people who aren't like your typical sort of Celtic kind of people. Um, so like copper sort of ginger, um, ginger skinned <laughs> hair. Uh, I was thinking copper skinned. And, um, and yeah, like it's the, first, it's the first in the Sun Song trilogy and basically Sorley's parents die and he has to go and stay with his grandfather who's a bit evil. I'm not going to say too much about it, I'll link my review of this um, down in the description bar. It was really really interesting, however the two sort of main points of it felt quite obvious to me. That or I'm just a really good guesser, <laughs> but it didn't take away the enjoyment of the novel and I am really excited to find out, like, get the next one. Because I feel like when I read a book, like a standalone book, it takes me about a, over a quarter to halfway through the book to really get into it because obviously the first part is setting up the story. And I really feel this book is just a setup for the second book, which is obviously going to be more about what's actually going on. You still enjoyed it though, right? Yeah, yeah, I still enjoyed it. I just felt it took me a lot longer to get into it because it took me a while to realise that most of the stuff that's happening is just to sort of give me info for the second one. At least that's how it came across to me. The world building for the rest of the trilogy. Yeah. And I mean, but even in saying that, I think I mentioned to touch on this in my review. I kind of want like a prequel or some sort of novella about how the world came to be like this. Like, it's only what, 70 years time away near, well, nearly 60 odd years time away. Um, so, obviously, I mean, obviously it's fiction, but unless Moira is the Doctor. Which, in which case, I am very excited. Not for the world to be like this, but... Um, <laughs> Yay, bring on the apocalypse! <laughs> But no, I really am looking forward to the second one, seeing where this goes, and I still think Sorley's a girl's name. <laughs> Even though it's a boy. Even though it's a boy. I just don't think Sorley's a name. Sounds like a plant. It's, well, his real name's like Song, Song Hurley. So yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to the second one. I believe it's going to be a while until it comes out, which is sad. I seen... No, who was it? Was it Megan Olivier? Someone on booktube received this book and the title is literally me, down to a T. It's called um, Why Am I Scared of Everything by Bethany Straker. Cameron will tell you, like he'll say to me, Emma, try a bit of holy cheese and I'm like, no. And he goes, why? And I'm like, gives me the fear. And he's like, why don't we go into the sea and have a swim? No, gives me the fear. Everything gives me the fear. 
basically that's like my running excuse. I'm like, gives me the fear, gives me the fear. Like I do, I just have like, a, it's not like, it's not even like a bad fear. Like I'm not like terrified of everything, but I'm just like, oh, not nah, dead like that, gives me the fear. She's wary of everything. I it makes making her do things very, very difficult. Yeah, I tweeted saying I need to get my hands on a copy of this book. Sounds exactly like me, blah, 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 blah. And obviously I tagged Bethany in it because it was her book. And she tweeted me back saying, I'd love to send you a copy. So I ended up DMing, gave her my address, and I got this in the post. Um, oh, wise one, you're not letting anyone see where you live. Well, I mean, people know where I work. So yeah, Bethany sent me the book, and it's... Where did I find it? She got a little postcard just saying she hopes I enjoy it, and saying, well, not quite saying it, but put her name down on it. Um, and it's basically just like... Um, a fictional character has got like full blown anxiety and everything scares her. So like driving, flying, having children, you know, the environment. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, like scared of death. So it's got like a little like thing about it here and there's like really nice little illustrations. And like I have quite bad anxiety, so like I could probably relate to a lot of stuff in here when the person's like, Oh my god, like what if this happens? What if, what if, blah blah. And it's like it's also got a little um little inspirational quotes and stuff at the bottom. So I think it'll be good because I'll be able to laugh at that and it'll kind of help me sort of laugh at myself when I'm so stupid worrying about stuff whilst also having a little sort of, um, not even inspirational quotes, but like mm -hmm. terrorism. The quote for terrorism is, there's no terror in a bang, only the anticipation of it. Which is true, actually. When I go and see Les Miserables at the West End, I know in the fight scenes, there are shit loads of gunshots. I still sit there going, there's gonna be a gunshot, and when it goes off, I shit myself. And the people next to me are like, oh, and I'm just like, fuck, because I knew it was gonna happen, it scared me even more. What was it? I always say, I'm not afraid of falling, I'm just afraid of the ground. True, you never said that to me before though. Have I not? Nope. I thought I had. I think I've also mentioned that at my work, we have a list of books publishers are giving out like review copies of and stuff. And this is why I bought the Jane Downham book, because Jane Downham, what the hell did you just do? Morning. Oh. Jenny Downham has a new book coming out in August, I believe, called Unbecoming. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't even have a cover yet. And I emailed a guy called Phil at David Fitling Books because I was interested in the copy. I was like, hey, can I have a copy of that? Set it on the shop address. And I got it in. I can show that because it's just the shop address. Um, so there was like a little letter that was like, you know, I remember I read one of her books and really enjoyed it, blah, blah, blah. Um, and... I have this. Um, I never noticed that before. What? Unbecoming is a book all women will read and all men should. Oh, neither have I. So, yeah, it actually doesn't really say what it's about. Oh no, if I remember rightly, I think it's something to do with dementia and single parents or something. Um, but I remember I opened it and I seen this page and I was like, oh look, it's signed, but it's not. It's just like superimposed. Then I turned it over. I was like, oh no, it is signed. Um, so it's also got a really nice font. I don't know if you can actually tell. Um, so yeah, I'm not 100% sure what it's about, but as Cameron just noticed there, Unbecoming is a book that all women will read and all men should. So I'm hoping to get this read pretty soon. I've got book proof number 11. My birthday is the 11th, so. It was fate, it was destiny. <laughs> My favorite numbers are three, four and 11, so. I didn't know about three and four. Yeah, I quite like three and four. We need to talk about this. <laughs> We need to have a talk, Emma. You've not discussed this with me. Come on, favourite numbers are an interesting thing. <laughs> I received that on a Sunday. I just remember it being a Sunday. I was coming to see you. It was Sunday. Yeah. And then on said Sunday when I got that book, there was because our week started on Sunday, the next week's publisher lists came out. And there was another book by David Ficklin Books on there that we had to email Phil about. And it's Running Girl by Simon Mason. Basically, i said that again. This, we've, we've got this book on our Buy and Get One Half Price offer, offer up in the teen section and it's sort of prime fiction-y novel, um, it's a guy who has like the highest IQ ever at the school he's at but he has the worst grades and then his ex-girlfriend's body is found, like drowned in a pond and there's a detective inspector who is on the case basically trying to figure out how she died and he's determined he'll solve the mystery and so he can get promoted, but then they say he doesn't need any assistance from Notorious Slacker Smith, or does he? So I think the ex-boyfriend ends up helping solve the ex-girlfriend's murder. So it's been sitting on the table and I thought, oh, it's quite interesting, but 
never really picked it up. So I seen they were giving out review copies and I was like, I'm gonna be really, really cheeky and email Phil again and be like, I just received that copy of Jenny's Proof. Yeah, can I possibly ask for this one? And I got an email back saying, yeah, sure, I'll send you one out. And when I got it, there was this little slip inside and he wrote, hi Emma, a dedicated copy for you. And he got Simon to sign it out to me, which just made my day because like, you know, the fact that the first one was signed anyway was really nice. I wasn't expecting this to be that. I wasn't even expecting to get this. I was expecting him to be like, no, we just gave you a proof, go away. <laughs> like I felt really bad like emailing after just receiving one for another one. But it was just so nice to like, just the fact that I'd sort of mentioned that, that I'd got that one and was asking for another one. Like, I don't know if he got all of them dedicated or if it was just me because I asked for another book. But it just, I, I, it honestly made my day. Like, just, I don't know. I actually never, ever had a dedicated copy of a book signed out to me before. I know you do. I know I do. So thank you, Phil. Thank you, Simon. So excited to read this one too. And I got that many books in June. I really don't know what I'm going to read first. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to promise you now I will not have so many books next month. She will. No, I won't. I can't afford it. You say you can't afford it every month and then you buy more <laughs> and more and more and more books. It's a problem, but it's a good one to have. Yep. Uh, and now I need to decide which books to put in my TBR for next month. Petro! Maybe. Definitely. I will see you shortly with my wrap up and tbr videos i missed my finger there when i've done that and yeah i really hope you enjoyed this please like comment subscribe you know the drill i'm gonna stop forcing you to do it when you do it i'm not even forcing you i'm just asking you but totally do it anyway please. she's good don't know what this is for see you later guys adios Bye.